Hello and welcome to the latest installment of our DPM Academy series. Today we're going to focus on how to configure the digital portfolio management workspace. My name is Caitlin Morse. I'm a product manager for DPM and I'm excited to dig right in. So one of the first questions that I get when sharing digital portfolio management with a customer is around the level of configuration and the question of, hey, if we're not using certain types of data or maybe our data isn't modeled correctly yet, and so we wouldn't be able to see our demands against our services, for example, can we still use DPM? The answer is yes. And we've done a lot to make it as easy as possible to configure the workspace. One of our newest configurations is also being able to configure the header as well as this general information section on the info tabs. And that's for every solution type. So let's dive in and show you how to do that. In our Digital Portfolio Management Admin Center, we have this settings tab. The way to find that is to type in digital in the search here, and you'll notice it's under Digital Portfolio Management. We have the Admin Center, the Overview, and the Settings. So when you click the Settings, it'll open directly to this tab in our Admin Center experience. The um, configurations are organized by solution type. So you'll see here under services and offerings, these are the different types of configurations that you can make for DPM for your services and offerings. The first um, um, tab or the first page, I should say, is the header. So this is that header section. And you'll notice that you can do separate configurations for your services and your offerings, which is awesome. And then we have the plan, build, run, and info. This info page will configure the general information on the info tab that I highlighted previously. And then there are specific types of configurations you can do for each tab. So let's first start with the header um, and we'll configure the, the service header. So when you open the record, you'll be able to notice that this is making a configuration specifically for you know services in this table. And these are the fields that are being shown in the header. This is whether those fields are set to active or not. So if it's set to true, active true, that means that um, they're being viewed in um, the header in the workspace. If you set any of these to false, it'll no longer be shown. And then this sets the order in which the fields are presented. And so these are kind of the three important fields to pay attention to. Now, let's say that you are using or you have been using the service portfolio management lifecycle fields, which are these two fields, but you want to move to the common services data model fields. And so you've made the updates and you want to now view those in DPM. So first, what we'll do is we'll set these to false. So effectively, we'll be hiding these fields. Next, we want to add the CSDM lifecycle fields to the header. So what we'll do is we will search um, in this list, this drop-down list, for those lifecycle fields. What you'll need to know is the name, the name of the field. And I just went right by. <laughs> so we're looking for lifecycle stage and lifecycle stage status. These are the two fields that we want. So we'll start with this top one. And what's that, what that's doing is basically just choosing which field you want to add to the record, and then we can set the order. So I believe the order of those two was like three and 400. So let's go ahead and submit this. And now we'll see that we have the life cycle stage here, which is perfect because we want owned by, consumer type, and then we want to see our life cycle fields. So I've added life cycle stage. Let's go ahead and add the life cycle stage status. So again, we'll, we'll go to the field dropdown. We scroll down, we find the life cycle stage status and let's update this order again. Let's do that to 400. So it'll come next. And now we can see that life cycle stage status has been added. That's perfect. Now, if we go back to this you know, service view and we refresh the screen, what we'll see is we have our own buy, we have our consumer type, and now we also see life cycle stage, life cycle stage status. And those previous life cycle fields are now hidden from the record view. So that was a super easy and quick configuration that we can make. And you can see immediate results in the workspace, in the workspace, which is awesome. 
The next thing we can talk about is life cycle information. So again, in that example that we had talked about before, talked about before, let's pretend that you are not mapping some of your planning related data to your services yet. And so you don't want to show that tab because it's not going to resonate with your users. So you can very easily toggle this off and that'll hide the entire tab. Now, the other thing you can do is you can be more prescriptive around what information, you know, your, you, you want to show in the tab itself. So let's say you do have some build data, but you, um, are not using all of these types. So let's say you're using projects, you're not using continual improvements. So we can go ahead and hide this section. And then again, just in making that toggle, it'll instantly apply. So let's go back to our view. We'll reload our page. And the first thing we'll notice is that the plan tab is no longer showing. The first one is build. The next thing we'll notice is when we scroll down on the page itself, we're not seeing continual improvement initiatives. We're just seeing our projects and our changes. And if we just pop back to this tab, you'll notice that it's projects, changes, continual improvements, and that's no longer showing on the page. So again, those life cycle modifications can be made instantly. And that way you can you know, very quickly and easily modify the data that you're, you're seeing in the workspace per solution type. And then one final thing I wanna highlight is for this info tab, you'll notice the same approach that we make for the header. So if you want to modify which fields and the order of fields to show in that general information section on the info tab, these are the fields that you do that. And again, it applies, we have these same types of configurations for business applications, application services, and also for portfolios. So in the di digital portfolio workspace, we have our enterprise portfolios, we have the different portfolio types, and here you can configure which fields you want to show in this preview header, as well as the header of the records themselves. So that applies to the portfolio records and the taxonomy node records, as well as actually being able to tailor what is shown for the on, as a preview for your services, for your offerings. And so you have like full levels of configuration for what you want to show in that preview, as well as then, of course, the detail page views of all of your solution types. So that was a very quick demonstration of how you can very quickly and easily modify DPM to show the data that makes sense for your organization. Thank you so much.